Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 26th of February 2022 and we're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 25th of February. And what a turbulent week it has been. Certainly one to test traders' nerves, that's for sure. So let's take a look. <laughs> Well, looking at gold and silver, we can see that gold fell $8 last week, falling from 1897 to 1889. Having hit a high of 1974, the highest in eight years, and a low of 1881, a fall of 0.4%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,409. That's up £13. And in euros, it closed at 1000 676 euros, that's unchanged. Silver did better, proportionately. It rose 30 cents, rising from $23.97 to $24.27, having hit a high of $25.64 and a low of $23.71, a rise of 1.25%. In sterling terms, silver closed at £18.10, that's up 47 pence. And in euros, it closed at 21.53 euros. That's up 0.36 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell from 79.1 to 1 to 77.8 to 1. Like equities, cryptocurrencies were extremely volatile. And Bitcoin ended up down $717 and currently stands at $39,257. Though it was down over $5,000 at one stage on Thursday. The Dow Jones closed on Friday at 34,058. That's up 834 points on the day and down 21 on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 4,385, up 95 on the day and up 37 on the week. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 13,694, up 221 points on the day and up 146 points on the week. Looking at oils, which were also quite turbulent, Brent crude closed at $97.93. Now that's up a whopping $4.39 on the week, though it did touch $104, and had it stayed there, obviously would have been up around $10 for the week. And WTI crude closed at $91.59. That's just a rise of 52 cents. So WTI crude prices, whilst they also rose quite considerably, underperformed compared with Brent crude. The dollar index stands at 96.61, and that's up 0.57 on the week, though again it was well over 97 and a, three, and a quarter during the course of Thursday. Now we concluded last week's video with the following forecast. We see gold trading between 1850 and 1950 and 1825 to 1975 as outliers. We see silver trading between 2325 and 2475 and 2275 to 2550 as outliers. Well, we're pleased we extended the gold outlier range to 1975 based on a possible invasion of the Ukraine and to see gold peak at 1974, one dollar less, was indeed gratifying as was the fallback to our normal trading range by the end of the week. The difference between its high and low for gold was $93, which was the largest for some considerable time. Silver closed well within our normal trading range and operated within it for much of the week. The invasion of Ukraine did, however, push it 14 cents higher than our outlier range. If only we'd said $25.75 instead of $25.50. The difference between its high and low for the week was $1.93, again, like gold, one of its largest moves for some considerable time. Obviously, price movements were dictated by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which caused gold and silver prices to skyrocket, and equities and cryptos to plummet, only to recover again later that day, which was an impressive turnaround. 
Indeed, so much so that yesterday we published a video entitled What Will It Take for Gold to Hit $2,000? And we've placed a link to that below. Please do listen to that. It covers some interesting aspects that tie in also with our gold price forecast that we published earlier in the week. Now, whilst all eyes were on Russia last week, some interesting economic data was announced by the United States. Market manufacturing and services flash PMIs were higher than expected, as was the Consumer Confidence Index. Initial jobless claims were down, as was continuing jobless claims. On the negative side, though, PCE inflation, both monthly and year over year, were higher, as was, though, real consumer spending for January. Both actions must now suggest a rate rise surely in March. Now, before we take a more in-depth look at gold and silver, it's worth looking at what data is coming out of the U.S. this week. On Monday, we have the Chicago PMI for February. Tuesday, market manufacturing final PMI and the ISM manufacturing index for February and construction spending in January. Wednesday, we have the ADP employment report for February, which may suggest what's going to happen on Friday. And on Thursday, of course, the regular weekly jobless claims and the market services final PMI and the ISM services index, both for February. And we have factory orders for January. Then on Friday, the all-important non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate and average hourly earnings all for February. So an important week. And in our view, the final determinant week, as far as data is concerned, to enable the FOMC to finally make up its mind about interest rates when it meets on the 15th and 16th of March. Geopolitically, we still have Russia and the Ukraine issue, which will no doubt continue for some time. And this will capture most of the headlines for the duration of next week, we suspect. So what is gold looking like technically? Well, it's resting at a major support level of 1888, which is where the 10-day moving average rests. And it has obviously psychologically strong support at 1850 and then extremely strong support at the 50-week EMA at $1,808. Resistance is seen near June's highs of 1916 The MACD histogram is suggesting consolidation. We should not ignore the fact that gold still fell, though, even as the dollar value also fell on Friday. Like gold, silver prices also fell after their burst forward on Thursday morning. Support is seen near the 10-day moving average of 23.93 and resistance at the 200-day moving average of $24.21. Like gold, the MACD is suggesting consolidation. Russia has said that it will consider talks if the Ukraine lays down its arms, while the Ukrainian president stated last night that they will continue to fight. So once again, a prediction for gold and silver this coming week is going to be extremely difficult and almost again entirely dependent on Russia and Ukraine. That said, there is important economic data being presented, which is likely to have an effect, especially towards the end of the week. So with this in mind, we see gold really trading between 1840 and 1940 and 1810 to 1960 as outliers, though we will be surprised if it gets that high. We see silver trading between 23.50 and 25, and 22.75 to 25.40 as outliers. What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you for listening. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. And as always, we wish you a safe, enjoyable weekend and prosperous week ahead. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.